Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about the secrets of looking younger through facial yoga and holistic skincare. You are going to learn so many new information. Your mind is going to like blow. It's like, it's so good. I met Sarah before and she has so much wisdom and so many tips to share with you. Make sure that you grab your pen and paper for to take all the notes that are necessary. We're going to be talking about things that you can do to improve your health. We're going to be talking about what is holistic skincare, how to practice holistic skincare. We're going to be talking about natural Botox effects, things that you can do that's going to give you similar benefits of Botox. And there are a lot more natural and healthy for your body and we're going to explore facial yoga and so much more then make sure that you stay tuned until the end and welcome to be healthy podcast the best way to discover practical tips and holistic health information from amazing wellness expert holistic doctors and even real people with incredible healthy journey to inspire you to become the best version of yourself. Hi, I'm Anna Marino. I am a self-healing specialist, a bestseller author, a physical therapist, and a public speaker. I heal myself before, and I know you have the power to heal yourself too. And today, we're going to be talking with Sarah Brown. Sarah is a holistic esthetician and a skincare coach. Her skincare career started in 2006 as a beauty therapist, which led her to teaching a private college in 2013. In 2015, she decided to stop to step away from traditional skincare for many professional and personal reasons, which led her down the path of holistic skincare. With 16 plus years of industry experience her mission is to empower women with alternative anti-aging solutions to make better choices when it comes to addressing aging concerns i can wait to learn more about it i'm sure you can wait too anyway, sarah thank you so much for joining us today welcome Thank you so much for having me on. I cannot wait to share all this knowledge that I have to help individuals feel and look their very best. Wonderful. And full disclosure, I had a session with Sarah last week and it should totally blow my mind. It was amazing. That If you are looking for someone to help with your skincare, she is definitely the person. Then let's get started. And today, let's kind of start you with explain what is holistic skincare yeah holistic skincare is still quite a taboo topic within the world of beauty but holistic skincare is uh, all about treating the skin from within not just dealing with the signs and symptoms as a holistic esthetician i take into consideration the whole whole picture i don't just look at the signs and symptoms i really dig deep into why is this happening so you're not finding yourself on that that runway of just keep going keep going keep trying keep trying buying more products and never seem to get anywhere because you're not dealing with the actual trigger so mm -hmm. this approach really does consider your physical and emotional needs to create and achieve balance within the body Mm, we are totally talking my language here. Like we are looking at the cause. And I think it's important to also highlight, and I always tell that to my patients, the skin is our largest organ. This is our, I was actually teaching a class yesterday about boundaries. The skin are, is our physical boundaries, literally. The, when things are not working inside properly, if you are not detoxing properly, it comes through the skin. Then absolutely, if we don't address the cause of the problem, the skin is not going to get better. Then totally, totally agree with that for sure. Absolutely. And 
you know, our skin is communicating with us on a daily basis. You just need to learn the art of listening to your skin. And I always put it to my clients and coaching clients that, you know, you can tell when somebody is not well, upset, maybe has an underlying condition that they're dealing with or angry or have had lack of sleep. You can see it in their face. You can mm-hmm. see it. So when you're having outbreaks or dryness or some other irritations, that is 99%, 99.9% down to your body trying to tell you something. And when people come in and they have their consultation with me, I zone up their skin. So I do kind of a reflexology on the face mm-hmm. where zone of the face is linked to an internal organ. So if you're having, for instance, outbreaks on the very high top cheek area, uh, that's related to the lungs. If you're getting outbreaks underneath the jaw, it's hormonal. And that can be linked to, to, you know, aging as well. Like when I look at somebody's face, I can tell, okay, well, where are these lines coming from? So they might be sleep lines, they might be dehydration lines, they might be expression lines. But all of these lines are appearing for different reasons. And each type of wrinkle needs to be addressed differently. You can't just throw a product at it. Each wrinkle needs to be treated in a different way. Mm, I love that. And it kind of goes back to the cause. And that's always my favorite topic, right? We can't just put a Band-Aid on the symptom and expect things to disappear. We got right. it back to like, why is that happening to begin with? And there is no one size fits all. And I think that's so important piece for people to start to remember. Then I don't know if I have said that enough, but I, I feel like I repeat that in every single podcast is like, we got to go back to the source of the problem because it is that important. And let's kind of like link that what you're just saying about, okay, now what can we do about it? How to practice holistic skincare? Yeah, absolutely. So how you can start practicing from this day forward is I break it down into five pillars. There typically are four, but I've kind of split it into my own little section of five different um, pillars or principles. So number one, and this is the absolute key, and a lot of people look at me and think I'm absolutely crazy when I say this, but this has to happen first, and it's awareness. And awareness is all about skin mindfulness, which is simply just being more aware of your skin. That links back to what holistic skincare is all about. Learn the art of listening to your skin. You know, it's communicating with you daily and it's going to let you know what the triggers are. You just need to learn and just simply be more aware of other things that are going on in your life, which I'm going to touch on just a moment, which is my second pillar. But skin mindfulness is simply just being more aware of what you do throughout the day. I personally work with clients and coaching clients to shift skincare into self-care, which then creates a lifestyle. So skincare isn't about three minutes or 10 minutes in the bathroom in the morning or in the evening. It's about skincare happening throughout the day. So for me, my skincare is three minutes in the morning three minutes in the evening, the rest happens throughout the day. And then it becomes subconscious. This is going back to skin mindfulness, where we're trying to create new habits and create cues within our environment to make us become more aware of how we're approaching our aging concerns. Mm. Number two links very closely, which is just be more conscious. So your movement throughout the day, your posture, you know, posture is absolutely key to maintaining usefulness. The neck is seen as the fountain of use, that if you keep your neck nice and strong and you have good posture, that actually helps combat a lot of aging concerns for instance you know the the venous rings the double chins the saggy jaw lines the jowls what happens as we age is our muscles lose strength as we've got bad posture and we're hunching over 
that allows gravity to take place and intensify. And that just pulls everything else down with it because our bone structure is less and our muscles are weak. So the fat pads in our face and the fluid can't stay up there. It has to drain down. And that's what creates the jowls, saggy jaw lines, double chins, saggy neck. So correcting your posture throughout the day creates good muscle memory. And again, that can become subconscious. You want to, I help people retrain their mindset and their muscle and mind connection that when you're slouched over, we want to reverse that to the point where it feels unnatural and uncomfortable. So when you are hunched over, you're like, oh, no, that doesn't feel right. I want to correct. Most of the time when you correct your posture and you sit up straight, it's an effort. You're like, oh, God, I can put my shoulders back. You know, it's an effort. It doesn't feel comfortable. We need to reverse that. And it's easy done so be conscious movement um posture and your hands-on approach and i know we spoke about this and you were like oh my goodness that's like a game changer why did i not know about this i'm sorry <laughs> before, before you get to that secret i just want to add that with the posture and the mindfulness because i feel like you're just repeating everything that i believe and i say and i tell to my clients totally 100 percent agree with every single word you say I feel like as a physical therapist, I, I hear people say all the time, like when they're they come into the office like that and we work on it and then suddenly they stand up straighter and they be like, oh my gosh, I feel taller. I feel lighter. I feel younger. The posture makes such a big difference about everything. And now we're adding a whole lot of benefits that is actually your skin on your face. I never actually thought about that far. I know all the other benefits, but now I'm going to add that to my patient and be like, and you can look younger, <laughs> not just feel younger, you can look younger. The, I just wanted to do a side note with the posture component, because I hear that a lot from personal trainers, yoga, Pilates, and there is a big difference between standing up straight and having a good posture. And I wanted to kind of make a side note on that because that's so important because a lot of people don't know what standing up straight is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when they do stand up straight, I'm going to give a little example here, is they do this. And that's kind of like almost like a military posture, like the chest goes up, the shoulder goes all the way down, the neck go forward. That is not a good posture. And a lot of people are walking around thinking they're standing up straight, their shoulders are back. And it's really important to discern the good posture is actually achieved when you can relax on that position. Mm -hmm. Because the good posture, just like walking, is supposed to be effortless. Yes. Initially, it's going to be a lot more effort because those muscles are weak. It's like if you're going to the gym for the first time and you're trying to get 10 pounds weight and you're like, whew, that's work. And then once it becomes stronger, it should feel effortless. You should be able to hold yourself there, relax your shoulders, relax your neck. The deeper muscles of the neck are working. I think that's another physical component as well. A lot of times people are using the accessory muscles and the neck is a protrusing and they're like, <gasps> and a lot of the uh, more the top of the lungs breath versus the deeper of the lungs breath. And I think there's a lot of that just on the postural component itself that people can explore and thinking about the benefit of like, oh, it's not just good posture and all the benefit and it will help me to look younger. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> Simple as a, a correction in posture. And like you say, you know, it should feel comfortable. You know, you should get to that stage where this feels better than this. Exactly. This feels better and it's about creating good muscle memories. It's fact, it's science. Muscles have memory. So you can reverse it and you can correct it with some time and awareness and being conscious of it. And again, just going back to touching on your point with, you know, shallow breathing, 
when I'm working with clients, they can't even take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. When I in my treatments, we do skin mindfulness and I have them breathing in. And a lot of people can't do it efficiently. And our lymphatic system, this is our trashman of our body that gets rid of all the toxins and gets rid of the dull skin and all the fat and fluid that's hanging around the face. If you can't breathe efe- efficiently or effectively, then you're not allowing the lymphatic system to work as effectively because our lymphatic system doesn't have a pump like the circulatory system. It ha- relies on you, your movement mm-hmm. and mass up. And breathing is a natural pump for the body. So if you are all tight up here and bad posture and you, you can't actually get a good breath because you know, you're tight. Again, just simple breathing is going to relax the body, can relax the mind, it's going to reduce stress, it's going to pump the lymphatic system. It's so overlooked breathing, it's crazy. And it sounds so simple, it's silly, but just having good posture and breathing. Start with that for seven days and start feeling the difference of that. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank ah. you for saying that. Thank you. Because I can't tell you how many times I see patients and they tell me, oh, I have a great breath. Like I have, I can expand. I've been doing yoga. I can do meditation. I'm looking at it. And I'm like, it's all superficial. It's all up of the neck. Is the neck is helping the shoulders back here. And it's like everything is going up to the ear. I call the earring breath. It's like it's going up to the ear, but it's not really expanding down to the diaphragm. And exactly, that's like one of the many, 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 many benefits is the lymphatic. It's the detox system. And it actually can help with neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain. I had a lot of patients that work for the breath, back pain, the back pain is gone. Because it's all connected. We're going to do another podcast another day for that topic because I can talk about for an hour just on that piece of the breath. But I think it's so important for people to realize that breath is really important and that conscience of dropping the breath into your belly. Mm -hmm. And most people don't even know what that means. Then put your hand there and feel the ribs moving. Then I would encourage everybody to just kind of try for a second. Like before you mm-hmm. change anything, just notice where is your breath right now? Is your breath up to the to the chest? And it's a skill. It, I find it really difficult when I first started practicing this. Yes. I was like, gosh, this is actually really difficult to fill up the abdomen first and then fill up the lungs. And I was like, this is crazy. I, I just mm-hmm. uh, practice. And then the body goes, oh, okay, we're supposed to be doing this. Okay, I'll, I'll do this. Exactly. Fine. Like with anything, it just takes time and practice. But that's how we should be breathing. But mm-hmm. when do we ever just stop and conscious breathe? That goes back to awareness and being conscious. Just that's stop fine. seconds and breathe and reset. That's the first steps. Absolutely. And I'm going to encourage the listeners right now, since we're talking about breath, can you be conscious about your breath for the rest of this episode? Whatever you're doing, walking, making breakfast, like cleaning the kitchen, whatever you're doing right now, or maybe just hopefully sitting on the couch and relaxing, whatever you're doing as you're listening to the rest of the episode, can you bring the attention to that belly breath? And notice how do you feel when we end the episode? Like just those extra mm-hmm. minutes throughout the day. And I always think about, like you say, about the awareness. It's like how much awareness can we bring? How many times a day can you pause and recalculate the neuroplasticity, right? Create a new pathway and then bring the attention back to, to the belly and feel I have no idea what I'm doing. No problem. It's normal. Put your hand there. Expand the belly. Expand the rib cage. Feel the expansion. Relax the neck. And it does become easier and easier as you continue doing. And if you are having trouble, because I hear that a lot from patients, I want to have a like a side note on that. Some people just can't not do it. They're so stiff. The ribs are so constricted. The muscles are so tight. You can try all day long and it's really hard to get there. That you need someone to work with you. Then you go to a physical therapist, contact me. 
like reach out to someone, like Sarah do some work on the area as well. But sometimes we need someone to actually go there and help the body to move because just thinking about it and focus is just not enough. Then I do want to make that disclosure because I do have patients that come really frustrated because they like, I've been trying and doesn't do it. And it's like, okay, it's nothing wrong with you. It's just your body's not collaborating. Let's work on the body first. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I got 30% more oxygen suddenly. <laughs> then, yeah, really good point there. And then just the last thing on um, being conscious is the topic that we spoke about together. And you're like, oh my goodness, like, why do they not teach us this? But it's, again, a being more aware of your hands-on approach. And I'm going to touch on the topic of products because everybody thinks skincare is about products and it really isn't. Mm-hmm. 10% of your focus on skincare should be product-focused. So let me rephrase that. So only 10% of your overall skin success is related to the products. Yes, products have a role to play and the choice of products is extremely important because our skin absorbs things. But 90% of your skin regime should be inside out approach, should be an inside out approach. But just to cover on that topic of uh, uh, an actual hands-on approach with the products. So you need to layer products correctly to allow them to work more efficiently. There's no good going and spending a fortune on all these wonderful products, whether that's just two or three or five. You need to be applying those correctly. So the absolute first change I would recommend anybody to do, doesn't matter what your skin type is, whether you have oily skin, acne skin, whether you're mature, young, whatever everybody should be starting with an oil-based cleanser. Now, it doesn't have to be fancy, an expensive one with a million different essential oils in. It can be as simple as a fractionated coconut oil or an almond oil, something lightweight. Now, where the magic happens with this is oil attracts oil. It acts like a magnet. So if you've got an oily skin um, or, you know, uh, outbreak skin, that oil is going to suck away or act like a magnet, getting rid of any excess oil to calm down those like clogged skin or the outbreaks. But also if you've got dehydrated skin or normal skin, it's going to hydrate your skin at the same time. A lot of cleansers out there strip away all our body's natural oils and they actually dry out our skin. And the reason why I'm going, I need to be careful what I say here, but the reason why a lot of them do that is because then they can sell you a toner. Once they've sold you a toner, which rebalances the pH level of your skin, which sometimes unsets it, then they can sell you a moisturizer to rehydrate your skin. That's where the three-step beauty regime started way back in the 1950s. You know, it was a three-step routine. And the reason for that was they were creating a problem and selling you a solution. Nowadays, with much more, you know, efficient products out there, there is much more transparent But again, we still need to be aware of what we're putting on our skin and how we're doing it. So oil cleansers do everything. That's all you need. It gets rid of dirt, grime, bacteria, excess oil. It will hydrate the skin, get rid of SPF, waterproof mascara. It will do the job. Once you've done that, that is enough. If you want to hop into bed, you go for it. You've done a good job. But If you want to then go on and use a treatment cleanser, a treatment cleanser is just your normal cleanser, which are sold to you as, oh, it cleans your skin. Well, it's not actually designed to do that, believe it or not. Yeah, it cleans a little bit, but you're paying for ingredients to do something. Normally you'll buy, you know, a hydrating cleanser, an oil-based cleanser, an anti-aging cleanser. They're not designed to clean the rubbish of your skin. They're designed to penetrate the products you've paid for into the skin. So clean your skin first and then allow that cleanser to clean and penetrate at the same time. So that's where the double cleanse came in to play. Mm. So treatment cleanse. Okay, hold on a second, hold on a second, Sarah. I'm taking notes here, you guys make sure (laughs) they take notes because this is is mind blowing. She was telling me about it and I was like, hold on a second, you use what? That just to, to clarify there, that you, you use the oil, first thing first, first step there will be use the oil and you recommended the fractionator, fractionator coconut oil, or what is the other one that you mentioned? 
or almond oil is quite a light baked oil yeah okay. how about jojoba so, oil because i hear jojoba is kind of similar to the skin absolutely yeah yeah that's a good oil to use Okay, the jojoba, coconut, fractionated. Not the regular right. coconut they use in the kitchen. I think that's not to that. clarify that because I know that was one of my questions. Like, oh, I'm just going to go in the kitchen because that's what I use for cooking. Not the oil, the fractionated oil. And then jojoba or almond, more like the lighter. And yeah. when you when you use the oil, like, do you use it like in a cotton ball? Like, do you use with your hands? Like, what would be the best way? Like, do you wash it? Do you keep it a little bit? What What do you do with the oil? When you yeah. I hear a lot of people then going away and doing this and doing it all completely wrong. Um, so it's probably a good uh, topic to touch on. So when you're using an oil cleanser, you can use around a teaspoon amount. Just pour it into the palm of your hand and get it straight on the skin. Don't mix it with water, oil and, and water don't mix. So just get it straight on the skin and massage it in for a good one to two minutes. Put a timer on your phone because a lot of people don't even cleanse for long enough. They put it on and then go, oh, this cleanser is rubbish. It's not even working. Give it time to work. So one to two minutes and you can be doing lifting and toning, cleanse movements, and that's all another topic. But get it on break down what's on your face or the dirt grind bacteria and then remove it with a warm damp facial cloth you can't just splash your face with water to get rid of cleansers even treatment cleansers need to physically be removed think about be conscious be aware be intentional of what you're trying to do trying to get rid of stuff off your face so use a warm damp facial cloth not hot but warm and you want to avoid as much water on your face as possible so people that are splashing water on their face to get rid of soaps or cleansers there's quite a harsh way of doing it water these days are full of you know chemicals and chloride and metals it's extremely drying to the skin so just use a damp facial cloth and then remove that oil then go on with your treatment cleanser roughly the same amount, massage it in for one to two minutes, and again, remove with a warm, damp facial cloth. That is absolutely key. That's a game changer to be able to do that. Mm. And then- You don't, then, just to clarify that, that, you don't recommend doing that when you take a shower, for example. It's not like doing, necessarily doing shower, it's doing that before bed. Like, like, like on the sink that you cannot like continue taking the shower afterwards and continue having more water on your face. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And again, I'm so much more in designing it to the person's needs, shifting this into a lifestyle. So if you want to do it in the shower, absolutely. Why not? If that's the time you're going to do it, do it. Because if you're not going to want to stand in front of the sink and do all that faffing around, then jump in the shower, you're not going to do it make the new habit easy, make skincare easy. So absolutely, you can do it in the shower, take your facial cloth in the shower with you and do it. Just don't allow the water to be pouring on your face. It's oh. kind of, yeah, face down, you can have the water pouring on the back of the neck and etc. but just avoid it as much as possible on the face area. I love it. And that's one of the things I love about the way you work. It's like, okay, how can we make it that simple enough that we can actually do it? Because I think for a lot of people, me including, like the skincare right. is kind of like so terrifying because I don't have an hour to be putting products and cleaning and doing that. How can we find ways that it becomes self-care, becomes part of our daily? And I, I love that about you. It's like, okay, let's modify, let's make that work. And and that's that's really refreshing, especially on the skincare area. <laughs> And I work with people from all walks of life and most of us live a busy life and you know a lot of my clients I say have your fractionated coconut oil down on the table by the sofa because we'll collapse on the sofa and want to chill out and not want to go upstairs you're so tired you don't want to go and wash your face before you hop into bed so have the fractionated coconut oil by the couch, I should say, not so for the couch, and do it while you're watching TV. Then just go up to the sink in the kitchen, get a warm flannel and wipe it off. Bung it in the laundry bin and you're done. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, you got, got the step number one, clean up the oil, step number two, and what else? So again, not going too deep into it. Uh, you can use a toner if you feel you need to. 
But then go on with your serum. Your serums are, they're gold dust, really, serums, especially for mature skin. We're talking about aging skins. Serums are powerful little concentrated fluids that feed the skin. So see a serum as food. So it penetrates down into the dermis layer. And that's where our water content in our skin is. Our skin is made of water and oil. So anything that you put on your skin with that is going to understand and recognize it. So serums are your food. They go down into the dermal layer. They produce collagen and elastin and plump out the skin. That hydrates the skin. And with serums, you want to um, drop it straight on the face or place some in the palm of your hand. And you want to just press a serum in. Press it all over. The reason why we press is just to penetrate that product deeper instead of it just laying on the top of the skin. This product needs to penetrate. So we need to tell it to do so. Be intentional. Be aware. Coming back to that. And you can even tap it in. Tapping is fantastic for boosting collagen and elastin. It's a toning technique. It puts the muscles into a state of relaxation. So if you're doing this before bed, that's going to relax the, the muscles in the face. You don't want to sleep on tense muscles. And again, in the morning, when you put on your serum, do a tapping technique. You can do your breathing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Let's this holistic skincare impactful so you don't have to find loads of different pockets of time throughout the day you could do most of your holistic skincare in one big chunk so tapping again as i say will put the muscles into a state of relaxation so you're not building upon tension throughout the day the next step is a facial oil it's maybe not so much if you have a high oil content skin an oily skin or an acne skin but all the other skin types could do with a facial oil. Facial oils penetrate the top layer of the skin. They're meant to stay on the top layer to hydrate the skin as well. So that goes on a similar way. You can drop it straight on the face or put it into the palm of the hands and just apply it, smooth it all across. And again, you can do another tapping technique slightly if you want to, why not? And then... Put your moisturizer on moisturizers do not moisturize so if you're suffering with dry skin especially going into these winter months and you're piling on the moisturizer wondering why it's not doing anything it's because they're not designed to do that crazy i know why call it a moisturizer oh. <laughs> i know and again the industry confuses us it gets us to buy into all these you know trends and things but moisturizers are designed to lock in hydration it's like putting a coat on mm -hmm. so see your moisturizers are putting a coat on it protects you from environmental threats and it's going to keep the skin nice and hydrated so when you apply a moisturizer you want to kind of leave a very thin film of moisturizer on the skin because you don't want it to completely evaporate off it's there as a coat so i literally just smooth it over my face again and just apply it on with just smoothing stroking motions and that's it then go on with a moisture um an spf always spf even on a cold cloudy winter day our skin is still exposed to uv rays 90 percent of aging concerns are caused by uv rays so yes spfs are important depending on what spf you go for whether it's a chemical or it's a physical depends on when you put it into your regime and again, this step, this regime may not be suitable for all skin types. You know, some people might need to put an oil on top of a moisturizer as well. Some people might not need a moisturizer. They just might need a hydrating SPF. So again, working with a professional can really help determine what products you actually do need and what sequence to put them in um, to get the best results. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why it becomes the simple becomes complex, right? It's like we we just know so much that it's important for us to go to someone like you that have all this wisdom wisdom and experience and be like, okay, what is the best for me? Right. What is my cause? What is my problem? And then you can create that the program that's gonna be specialized that you're not feeling like you're taking a whole hour on your skin. You can just choose and pick what are the most important based on your lifestyle and going back to the idea of creating a skincare that is self-care 
not just adding more stress into your life. This is awesome. I, I'm loving all of this. The, I wanted you to kind of bring a bit more of the natural Botox effect. I'm really curious about that. Yeah, absolutely. So again, stimulating from within. Um, so our body produces everything it needs, you know, collagen, elastin, it has everything, muscle structure, proteins, blood, nutrition, it has everything. It just slows down as we age. So we just need to stimulate that. That natural Botox effect is build the muscles back up, feed the skin what it needs. And nutrition comes into play with that. So that's another pillar of holistic skincare is nutrition. Your diet, okay, comes into play. Skin snacks, that's another big thing that I work on with people is skin snacks. What does your skin need? What can we snack on throughout the day? And then relaxation, the art of relaxation. This is the natural Botox effect. So when I used to teach, I'm going to come closer to the screen here, but when I used to teach, I was so expressionate. I was always raising my eyebrows and I was frowning when I was talking. And now I, I've learned not to do that through strengthening the muscles and creating that mind and skin connection. I now know my mind tells me you're frowning. You're raising your eyebrows, you're clenching your jaw. I don't even have to see it, you know, or see the consequences of it. I'm already aware of when I'm, that's my trigger, when I'm creating those fine lines and wrinkles. So now when I'm talking, I can have an expression. I can raise my eyebrows, but I'm not wrinkling my forehead and I haven't had Botox as I can do all this, but I can now raise my eyebrows. I'm doing it now if you're listening to this without wrinkle in my forehead I don't need Botox to do that I can retrain my muscle memory to do that for me and now I know if I'm frowning again it's unnatural to me I've trained myself that that doesn't feel natural I don't like the feeling it sends a message to my brain saying uh, uh you, you're frowning simply stop that's all Botox does it prevents you from having expressions but for me, um, we're human. We're supposed to have expressions. You know, we we don't want to just have a blank face. You know, we, we are designed, our muscles and skin are designed to move. We're designed to have an expression, but just not prolonged expressions. So when you do do a little bit of a, oh, you know, a frown, of course we can do that. The, that, the wrinkles come from prolonged frowning and continuous frowning and frequent frowning so it's just retraining your mind and your muscles to simply stop relaxing the muscles understanding the feeling of tension and I think maybe we could do this now and this is what I tend to do in my facial yoga workshop so what I want you to do is just close your eyes for a second and you need to train yourself to feel tension we hold tension most of our life and we just don't know it until it's too late until we get an ache or pain or we get the fine lines and wrinkles we're like oh yeah i'm i'm holding some tension there so close your eyes and i want you to raise your shoulders clench the jaw squint the eyes and just you know clench your fists and just feel the tension how does that feel it's different for everybody but does it feel hot warm does it feel painful? Is it giving you a headache? Like, what does it feel like when you're frowning and raising your eyebrows or clenching your jaw? Now, let's feel the feeling of relaxation. Let's feel what we're supposed to feel like. So just take a deep breath in through your nose and drop your shoulders and release through the mouth. Breathe out, release the jaw. Release tension around the eyes, unfrown, and just focus on relaxing every muscle in your face. Just let it fall. Just let it fall down. Imagine gravity is taking place here. And then let's just create that tension again. So clench the fist, raise the shoulders, hold your breath, clench the jaw, frown. And again, just feel the feeling straight away. Like, how does it feel? Tense, tight, painful, headachey. I immediately get a headache when I frown. Mm -hmm. And then again, take a deep breath in through the nose. Drop the shoulders, release through the mouth, release the jaw, 
release the cheek muscles, eyes, and frown. Kind of maybe just be more conscious of widening the eyes slightly. How does that feel? And open in the chest, unclench the fists, and feel the difference. I feel lighter. I feel a little bit in a good way tingly. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the headache anymore. <laughs> it's gone. So you need to train yourself to, first of all, understand the feeling of tension and relaxation, relaxation before you can even ask the mind to come on board. So moving on from there is the exercise element, retraining muscle memory to respond in a certain way. So it's not facial yoga isn't just about strengthening the muscle it's about retraining the muscles to respond in a certain way it's that natural botox effects an exercise can be face yoga it could be body yoga you know going down the gym stretching pilates our fascia line is all connected you know if you've got a tight jaw normally you're going to have a hip issue if you've got hip issues that will travel up the fascia line to the jawline and then give you migraines it's all connected from your toes to the top of your head we have to take the whole body into consideration even when we're dealing with aging so when we're talking about exercise whole body as well as the face so many people go down the gym and work their body out but don't do their face and what I say to people is you believe in the gym and they're like yeah yeah I believe in the gym I pay you know 50 bucks a month to go to the gym and I'm like oh so you you believe in the process and they're like yeah I'm like, what about face yoga? <laughs> what, those silly faces. I'm like, face yoga is just a fancy way of saying facial exercises. You know you can change your body appearance through regular exercise, good nutrition, good mindset. The face is no different. It's the same design. Actually, it responds better because the skin on your face is attached directly to the muscle, unlike the rest of the body where it's attached to a bone or a tendon. The facial structure is slightly different. So any slight contraction of a muscle is naturally going to lift the skin because it's attached directly to it. The reason why we're getting fine lines and wrinkles isn't just about expressions, it's about the weakening of the muscles, allowing things to droop down, the breakdown of collagen and elastin. It's the tight fascia that's wrapping around the muscle, not allowing it to flex and move. Um, when our muscles weaken, it allows the fat and fluid to drain down our face, creating the jowls and the double chins. So you know you can change your body appearance your face is no different. It's fact, it's science, it will work. It's not going to give you a facelift, you know, like you went and paid $100,000 for a facelift. Yeah, you know, but it's going to prolong usefulness. I hate the word anti-aging. We should be embracing getting older. You know, it's going to happen. What my mission is, is to help people feel and look their very best at the age that they're at. You know, I'm coming up nearly 40 and I feel and look better than I did in my early 30s. Looking back, I'm shocked. And mm -hmm. um, I was like, what's going on? And I feel better now in coming up to 40 than I, I did in my 30s. And that's my goal is to share that knowledge that it is possible you know, you believe in the gym. Why not believe in facial yoga, which is the same principle? And what we can do now is experience the power of face yoga if you want to do some. Absolutely, yes. I'm, I love the exercise with the contract and relax. And I think everybody that's listening probably noticed that when we contract everything, it just doesn't feel good. I was so uncomfortable that I had to relax some of the yeah. contractions. It's like, no, I don't want to feel this way. It feels awful. And yeah. And how many times a day we go with our jaw clench all day and we don't even recognize until people get pain. Yeah. And I think even when you think about the facial yoga, just as a physical therapist, it's like, yes, the muscles on the face are not different than the rest of the body. And I tell that to my patients all the time. I work with patients that have TMJ pain, ear pain, eye pain like neck pain and all of those things it can be work when we work with the face and work with the nerves and the lymphatic and some of the things that you are talking about it like even when we think about people that have bell spouse with the paralysis 
we can still get those muscles to reactivate and work better. Then of course, exercise in the face just makes sense that it's not going to just help with the strengthening itself, but will help with the appearance. Like when I think about the wrinkles, it's almost like, like in my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I think is kind of almost like an atrophy. It's kind of like if you're walking around with the elbow band and it's like it becomes atrophy, it becomes contracted and it's like, and now you're trying to open the elbow and it's straight the elbow and it's like this extra stretch and extra tension. That's kind of sometimes where I feel when I'm working with patients that have like wrinkles, like the muscle is just so mm-hmm. contracted and it's so weak then it makes so much sense when you bring it from that angle of like, yeah, facial yoga, exercise your muscles on the face. They're no different than everything else. And thank you for that, for the added that. But yeah, let's practice. Maybe you can give like two or three tips with the yep. yoga exercise that we can start practicing today. Absolutely. You can take this away with you and start practicing with it. And the good thing about facial yoga is there's a lot of other elements to it. There's acupressure relaxation because we need to relax the muscle as well as work it out. It's like going to the gym and then go for a massage. It, it works together. Okay. So let's show you one for the neck area. This is quite um, a good, powerful one where you can feel it working. So we're going to work the big slab of muscle in the front, the platasma muscle. So we're going to, this is called kiss the sky, this one. So you have to make the sound of a kiss and we are jutting out our bottom lip activating this muscle so we are going to place our fingertips underneath our collarbone and just press down slightly we are going to look up to the ceiling as soon as you feel that muscle in front of the neck engage stop soon as you see the ceiling stop don't throw your head right back just be aware be conscious of as soon as you feel it tightening up stop then we're going to jut out our bottom lip And then we're going to kiss the sky and we're going to hold it for two seconds and then release. So I'll show you if you're watching this. So you're just jutting and pushing out the bottom lip as a kiss. And you should feel that muscle engaging. So it's like a lunge, you're Mm -hmm. lunging producing lunging and coming back so fingertips down so hold for two seconds and then release do that 30 times come back and reset and then you can go back and do that another 30 times but we call this resistance training when we apply weights with our hands it's a little bit of resistance training if you take your hands off try it now so just Lean your head back, tilt your chin up to the ceiling. And as soon as you see the ceiling, stop and then do the kissing to the ceiling. It feels completely different. Mm. Don't have that, that resistant training there. So that's a good one for the neck area. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's a good one. Good one. So you can do it in, you know, when you sat downstairs on, on the couch or in front of the laptop, take a couple of minutes just to, to do that movement. Um, and that's really good for double chins and correcting posture. It's strengthening that muscle. Mm. The Another move, which is a good one for contouring the cheek area. And we are going to cover our teeth with our lips. And s- think about smiling upwards. And you might feel a shake or quiver. This is called an isometric exercise where it's a bit like a plank when you fire and activate the muscle and you're holding it and stimulating it. We're going to use our index fingers to push down on the jowl area just so we're not creating any lines here. So we're going to cover our teeth with our lips as much as you can. Really be conscious of doing that much as you can and then smile and you're activating these cheek muscles. When you do that, Just be conscious that you're not squinting. So don't do this. Mm. We isolate this muscle and just activate the cheek. Just the mouth, not the eyes. If you're just listening, we're trying to focus on the mouth and then we seal the lips and then make a little smile just with the cheeks. Yeah, so cover your teeth with your lips, put them together and smile. And then your two index fingers, place them on top of the jowl lines where you tend to get jowl lines and just hold that smile for around 10 seconds. 
just hold it up and you should feel it starting to shake or quiver. So right down by the corners of the mouth, place your finger, index finger. I'm trying to think of the listeners. So end of your index finger by your nostrils and then bring them diagonally down by the side of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And breathe. Watch your shoulders. Don't let them rise up. And you tend to feel this one once you've had a break. So let's stop. Now let's go back and try and do it again. And you'll probably find your muscles gone into fatigue slightly where you struggle and you go straight into that quiver. So cover the teeth with the lips, press them together, focus on turning up the sides, the corners of the mouth as a smile. Breathe. And you'll feel again that shake or quiver. Do that for up to one minute. So mm -hmm. you can breathe. Yeah, you can hold for 10 seconds, stop, 10 seconds, stop. And again, you can do that anytime, anywhere. You know, if you've not, if you've got makeup on or you haven't got clean hands, just do the smile action. Just activate and smile. It just looks like you're smiling. I do it in the car. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly doing that, just doing, pressing my lips together and holding and activating my cheek muscles and just smiling. Um, and that really gives you a high contour cheekbone. Oh, I love it. You guys, make sure that you practice that. You can remember how to do later. Take notes because those are such good exercise. I love it. I love it. love it. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing that with us. Those are great. You're welcome. And there's more in, um, let's say, the but beyond Botox Digital Guide, there's some, there's some exercises in there with YouTube links. So it's a little bit easier when you watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah go ahead and share that with us i know you have a special gift for our listeners then can you share with it with them what it is and how can they find that yeah absolutely so um, i put together a digital guide called beyond botox so i share my top three botox alternatives to help enter you into the holistic skincare world just have a little taster a little touch of what it's all about and there's my three top tips in there, effortless effortless ways to maintain usefulness naturally, um, things that you can do, just fit them into your lifestyle effortlessly. And that's the, the key, really, is to make it easy for people to do it. And that's there. That's on in my web on my website, which is www.sarahbrowncoach.com. And it's the first thing that comes up. Uh, it just says download your guide and, and it's there. So feel free to go and check that out um, and have a little flick, flick through and start incorporating it, you know, from today. Absolutely. Make sure you guys sign up for that because that's, that's juicy. I love it. And what would be the best way for our listeners to contact you? So on my website, um, there is a contact me now section where it directs you to my email uh, I also have an Instagram page with tons of free holistic skincare education on there. And you're more than welcome to direct message me. And that is Sarah.jbrown underscore. Uh, it's not very uh, a simple one, that one, but I'm sure we'll put it in the show notes. Yes. Uh, that's I've got tons of information on there. Um, and also Facebook um, as well, just Sarah. Um, I've changed it actually recently, Skin Vision, um, which is uh, dedicated to my salon where I'm going to be adding more tips and tricks in there to maintain usefulness. Oh, fantastic. Then if you guys need some facial, if you need to analyze your skin, if you want to get all this expertise and this specific approach for your skin, make sure that you contact Sarah. She is amazing. I totally validate her. Been there, done that. Definitely coming back. She is amazing. Make sure you contact her. Schedule your appointment today. And yes, we are going to be adding all the links on the show notes. You can find the show notes at www.behealthywithanna forward slice podcast. And we're going to find all the information there. Then Sarah, thank you so much for sharing all the wisdom. I feel like we could be here for another hour. This is just so much good stuff. And it's like hard to keep everything condensed. <laughs> really good tips there. A lot of things people can start doing today. And thank you so much for joining us. 
It's been a pleasure, absolutely. And uh, I would love to come back on and talk more because, like you say, me and you especially could be on here for hours. Um, and there's so much more we can delve, delve into. But um, it's been a pleasure. Um, thank you ever so much for having me on and allowing me to share my passion and my wisdom. Absolutely. I think we, we do have a lot in common between the body awareness, the mindset. Yes, so much we can talk about it. And for the listeners, make sure that you share with us on the comments what is one step that you can learn from today and can start applying. I would love to hear what was your biggest takeaway and what you can mm-hmm. start doing moving forward. The, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoy make sure you subscribe to our channel, leave us a review and share our podcast with anyone that you know that needs to improve their health. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. And if you're ready to reclaim your life and heal from chronic pain, join Be Health Academy. Be Health Academy is a science-based program that offers accountability, pain science education, stress management techniques, ways to shift your mindset, increase body awareness, techniques to release the trauma from the body, and so much more. With the right resources, you have the ability to heal yourself. You don't have to do it alone. Let me show you the way. Join Be Health Academy. And that's it for today. Keep it up with the good work. I will talk to you later. And until then, be healthy.